My topic is on uh, the word, well, or the, the concept of chronotope, the mutual dependency of time and space in, mu in visual music. With a natural tendency to merge, diversify, and share various forms of artistic expression and aesthetics, time and space have become the most malleable assets of the artists and composers' creative instrumentarium, through which the combination of music and visuals is most effective in conveying various forms of emotions and concept. And not the most effective, but <coughs> most effective in conveying that, because there are obviously other forms of artistic expression be it actual uh, or non-representational. Humans often perceive and process information through multi-sensory experiences, yet it remains a challenge to create unified gestures without treating sensory channels separately. Multimedia technologies, and perhaps the natural outcome of a systematic approach to represent abstract concepts in the material world, Yet abstract conceptual ideas perme permeate through available means to communicate human emotions even further. Systematic ramifications support our creative imagination. And fortunately, technology has its limits, which creates new challenges to expand the creative mind. Within these limitations, the incentive for the creatively inc inclined person is to find solutions circumventing technological barriers. New aesthetic dimensions emerge from the cross-fertilization of ideas and interpretations. By this I mean that often in my mind I have an idea but cannot do this in one software application for example. And I have to adopt, uh, adopt a multi-platform or horizontal approach to design and recreate what I actually have in mind. This can mean using Max MSP for one aspect, Quartz Composer in another, MIDI, Open Sound Control, Java, Python uh, for a calculation, MIDI controllers for live control, iPads, uh, real-time performance and also use offline and or non-linear editing to accomplish what I really wish to, to accomplish uh, artistically and still obtain interesting or unexpected surprises. Chronotope is a term that was coined by 20th century Russian philosopher and literacy, uh, literary critic Mikhail Bakhtin uh, to refer to how time and space are described and represented in literature. Multimedia and audiovisual art lend themselves well to the term due to the very nature of the art forms concerned. Time and space have increasingly become mutually dependent, especially through the use of technology. My work, entitled Chronotope, which you'll see this evening at the Planetarium, combines electronic uh, ele music or electroacoustic music, computer art, and abstract digital expressionism through nonlinear use of technology combined to create a mutually dependent time-space structure and form as a unified gesture over linear time. My piece, Chronotope, explores the synergy and correlation between diverse forms of media, from the minute motions of human skeletal uh, muscular cells captured on microscopic time-lapse video to large-scale photographs of the Great Barrier Reef um, and other typical images of the vast Australian landscape layered into new audiovisual compositions, creating astounding abstract universes. Chronotope is a representation of the multi-scale world we live in through the blending of senses, allowing the composer to express atypical <coughs> interpretations of natural phenomena and abstract ideas. Visual music in its modern form has the potential to extend human consciousness and perception. In Chronotope, my, my aim was to design an integrated system combining various layers of electronic media with the intention to seek a formalized and systematic approach to manage several influences, meanings and sources, and eventually relate them to a combined holistic way to create a personal audiovisual exploration of my own creative process. An audiovisual work can be static or dynamic in nature. It can take the form of a score, motion graphics, video music, or even a photo accompanied by a sound or some music, or no music at all. An audiovisual work potentially relates to a specific yet malleable chronotope emerging from the mind of the artist when the work is actually created and conversely relates to the imaginary time-space world the artist seeks to materialize, represent, and communicate or disseminate. When considering a visual music piece, or any other art form, 
we may refer to the notions of form, structure, context, genre, aesthetics, semantics, and poetics within the realm of the imaginary, abstract, and conceptual world. Visual music is often, more often than not non-figurative, non-representational, and abstract, yet does not exclude a hidden narrative, depending on whether recurring or perhaps even non-recurring elements have significant and symbolic essence in the construction and formalization of the work. As well, one must consider the question of cultural significance and social context in which a visual music piece is created. Paradoxically, works combining several layers of material and media can have contrasting attributes containing both narrative and abstract connotations, but remain non-figurative in most cases, which alludes to the question of representational art versus non-representational art, which is a question outside the scope of my, my presentation, uh, but was mentioned earlier this morning by Aitana. In her, his four essays, on the dialogic imagination, Bachtin, Michael Bachtin, proposes the idea that in poetic genres, artistic consciousness is understood as a unity of all the author's semantic and expressive intentions, fully realizes itself within its own language, the language of the poet in his, his language, own personal language or his own voice. He is utterly immersed in it, inseparable from it, he makes use of each form, each word, each expression according to its power to assign meaning as a pure and direct intention. In my view, the same applies to visual music in the context of realizing, materializing emotions and consciousness where the immersive experience um, becomes an extension of the composer's mind, an abstract representation of the artist's interpretation of time and space. The world we live in, Bachtin makes the case that verbal art must overcome the divorce between an abstract formal approach and an equally abstract ideological approach. Of course, this was in a different socio-political context. In this context, um, form and content in the discourse are therefore one, are therefore united. This leads to cognitive science, which is the interdisciplinary scientific study of the mind and its processes and focuses on how information is represented, processed, and transformed. This may include psychology, philosophy, linguistics, anthropology, neuroscience, and artificial intelligence, all of which are essentially foundational aspects of music and artistic creativity. At the conference event entitled Creative Brain, Music, Art, and Emotion, Dr. Bruce Miller, behavioral neuropsychologist with a particular interest in visual art and creativity, relates to Fellini's cartoons and self-portraits during a presentation on the multi-dimensional mind and its relation to cognitive neuroscience. He says, I quote, you get the humor, so much of the richness of Fellini's mind, that one, that's one of the amazing things about art, is that though the visual, through the visual process, you can actually get a feel of what is going on in somebody's consciousness as they roll out a piece like this. Recent advances in functional neuroimaging have enabled researchers to understand and even predict uh, perceptual experiences with a high degree of accuracy. For example, it is possible to determine whether a subject is looking at a face or some other category of visual stimulus, such as a house, for example. The right hemisphere is responsible for visual perception, interpreting nonverbal information. The left brain is responsible for symbolic linguistic processing of information, including the conceptual aspects of art. This is well-known information, of course, but it is worth noting in the context of visual music, linking this with the processing of concepts such as time and space, and what I, described, what I describe as an audio-visual chronotope. Um, it, it has been shown that it is possible to train people to manipulate their own brain activity and improve their visual sensitivity through neurofeedback, where real-time brain imaging enables participants to watch their own brain activity on screen. This was a study conducted at University London College and funded by the European Union and Swiss National uh, Science Foundation. In addition, our perception of time reveals our emotional state. There is no single uniform time, but rather multiple times which we experience. Yesterday, uh, Felix mentioned sound and image our, par our parallel brains, they have a direct connection between the brains. 
Our temporal distortions are therefore a direct translation of the way in which our brain and body adapt to these multiple times or multiple brains. This leads to chronotopes in visual music, taking many new forms within the musical context to express uh, musical ideas, incorporating and combining new technologies to process visual, spatial, and temporal information to enhance uh, what Daniel Quaranta described yesterday afternoon, the transsensory experience and understanding of the intersemiotic uh, of the intersemiotic translation to examine the degree of significance between corresponding elements. Basically, it is the process of examining chronotopes in visual music and find ways to extract its narrative. One recent example is a piece of mine called Antipode, uh, which I created in 2012, a network music composition exploring audiovisual correspondences and the relationship between non-symbolic, abstract visual representations and sonic musical gestures. The concept relies on a grid whereby corresponding column and row coordinates trigger specific images and sound combinations. The visual score is therefore, enc uh, therefore encodes, suggests mo uh, musical motifs and textures that can be adopted in various musical contexts, instrumentations and configurations, so it's an open performance uh, system. Complex imagery translates into multi-parametric musical information. Color, shape, brightness, contrast, movement, direction, layers, symbols, space, speed, etc. Um, all are variables that can be interpreted musically as pitch, rhythm, dynamics, timbre, texture, emotion, etc. Um, I'll play an excerpt of Antipode. Uh, so on the, on the left side, you have a musician in New Zealand interpreting the visual score that I'm controlling in Sydney. This piece, Antipode, was based on a previous work in which I created a dynamic visual score for a musician, a highly experienced percussionist, Daryl Pratt, at the Sydney Conservatorium uh, of Music in the piece I entitled Eureka. So there are two excerpts for Eureka in which you see the visual score on the top right corner. <laughs>
prender la luz, por favor. A further example is the work Cognitive Sound Image by Deborah Kim, uh, one of our honor students at the Conservatorium. The work focuses on the cognitive processes in music through the visual representation of performance gestures on the Korean percussion instrument Janggu, <laughs> with newly designed Janggu symbols and moving images. The aim of this creation is eventually to examine the human perceptual system and contemplate how the audience perceive Janggu symbols. Uh, we'll leave the light open. So Janggu symbols are projected on a screen, correspond with the matching sound of the Janggu itself and the performer's playing techniques and gestures. The speed and dynamics of playing are determined by the texture and brightness of the moving images. This work was also designed to extend uh, uh, techniques in Korean traditional music. symbols do not exist in the traditional Korean uh, repertoire. These are invented for the purpose of the visuals, visual score. Um, this is actually was during a performance at IZ a few weeks ago in Sydney um, in the Conservatorium of Music cafeteria, um, which also has a, a stage. And this is what the Janggu instrument looks like. It's played on, on the floor and the various uh, playing techniques with the mallets and with the hands as well. So perhaps uh, this is what uh, rolling out of the piece means, as you are engulfed in the immersive visual and rhythmic gestures. Emotional energy conveyed through art is paramount in understanding the medium, in particular with visual music, where specific audiovisual associations and interconnections create temporal and dynamic variations. We do need to distinguish between the more functional role of sound in enhancing the narrative in a soundtrack for a film or video, and sharing the role of structuring time and space. So we need to distinguish that um, with sound as an abstract entity in audiovisual media. And so as a uh, keynote speaker yesterday morning, Jean Gagnon mentioned, there uh, are maybe three different definition proposed for visual music. I cannot fit in any one of them, but a combination of all three. Um, magnetic resonance images and position emitron tomography reveals that when a subject listens to music, there are significant dopamine release during the anticipation phase, and that drastically changes where there is release or the subject experiences a change in the state of the music, such as a cadenza, for example. Hemodynamic responsive, uh, responses in dopamine activity were maximal in one area, one particular area called the caudate during the anticipatory phase, but shifted drastically more um, in the lower part of the brain to the nucleus accumbens during peak emotional responses. So that's what you see on the left side. And on the right side as well, you see an orange red part shifting completely at a critical point where there's a cadenza or a, a sort of um, a reward. There's anticipation leading to a, some form of musical visual uh, reward. In this case, the study was made only on music. This was incidentally a study conducted at the Montreal Neurological Institute um, and the Center for Inter Interdisciplinary Research in Music, Media and Technology. You might be aware of this, Ricardo. Um, so basically, when I saw that, I was fascinated by the radical switch in the mind when experiencing key transitions in music. And therefore, I wondered how to put this in practice during the creative process. Now, let's go back to the term chronto itself. A parallel can be found in Mikhail Bakhtin's essays on the problems of literature and aesthetics where he defines the chronotope, literally time-space, as the intrinsic connectedness of spatial and temporal relationships that are artistically expressed in literature. It expresses the inseparability of space and time. 
In the liter literary arch artistic chronotope, spatial and temporal indicators are fused into one carefully thought out concrete whole. Time, as it were, thickens, takes on flesh, becomes artistically visible. Likewise, space becomes charged and responsive to the movements of time, plot, and history. Interestingly, uh, just early this morning, Enrique mentioned that there are spaces between words. Um, perhaps we don't need continuity when we explain things with words uh, to describe a situation, and in the same way in visual music, there are spaces, gaps between the senses, but this doesn't take away the meaning and expressivity of the, me of the medium. We are at, uh, all at least familiar with um, Michel Chion's explanation of visual synchrosis, uh, but I simply wanted to distinguish synchrosis from synchronicity or synchronization. Um, uh, synchronicity is the term used to describe events that appear significantly related but have no discernible causal connection. Most visual music works incorporate synchronicity as a vehicle of expression, associating abstract visual concept uh, or concepts such as shape, texture, and movement. And from a perceptual perspective, the variation of rate or time scale implies a malleable synchronicity. Much of the post-production tools available for audiovisual media allow precise methods to achieve malleable synchronization and at the same time afford the creator to experiment with synchronicity as a new parameter to achieve engaging perceptual effects not possible otherwise, and work against normal expectations of audiovisual associations. A loose sync gives a less naturalistic, more readily poetic effect, is what Michel Chion describes in terms of uh, synchrosis. An audiovisual chronotope <coughs> is exactly that, a unique combination involving physical dimensions, namely time and space, through sound to express creative thought and its processes in the abstract wor uh, world. A chronotope may reveal information on the creative mind and the context in which the work was designed and may shed some light on the cognitive processes involved in the elaboration and interpretation of a multi-layered, multimodal artistic gesture involving different media. Visual music as a unified form of expression may reveal the way in which humans inter interpret, organize, categorize, prioritize and process information through multimedia applications. In summary, future work should include studies in cognitive activity during the creative process itself to open new paths towards understanding visual music and perhaps unravel the potential unity on, of the semantic and expressive intentions of a visual music composer. The, the essence of the message and expressive audiovisual gestures are not necessarily encoded in the symbols themselves but by the progression and sequence of such abstract elements conveying human expression and emotions associated with either layer of the construction, sonic or visual. Finally, an in-depth understanding of the creative processes involved in visual music will lead researchers to appreciate the artistic discourse as an intrinsic social phenomenon throughout its entire range and in each and every aspect of its elements from the sound and the image to the furthest reaches of abstract meaning through audiovisual chronotopes, enhancing expressive content, conveying human emotion, and heightening, enriching the spectator's immersive experience. Gracias.